Rocked out to have done that. Nice. Can I just go shirtless? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah you can. Get more views that way. Head up the elevator right now, get this testing done. We are going to work today. It's gonna to be a tough one. Today we are in the Nike Running Performance Lab, NYC, New York City. We're gonna get some performance testing done today. We're doing force plate testing, VO2 max, some sweat testing. Gonna be a lot of good data coming in today. So the first one is your ability to absorb shock. So can you absorb shock coming downhill? How does that look? And then your ability to recycle energy as well. So that's more relevant to flat running. Hi, I'm Dr. David Lippman, uh, health and human performance specialist, uh, working with different and a uh, friend of Jonas. Particularly because we're loading tendons and then they're unloading. So we're looking at your ability to then recycle that energy and the more efficient you are, the better you recycle that energy, which is super important for road runners. A little bit less important for a trail runner because you've got other terrain, you're changing direction, uphill, etc. So when you're talking about ultra performance, depending on the ultra, right? Western States running ability, true running flat ability is a bit more relevant. Whereas UTMB, you're hiking a lot more, you're going uphill a lot more. You start to look at uphill efficiency. So that's the first part there. And we'll put you on the treadmill. We'll get you doing, um, get you with a mask on. We'll look at the amount of calories you're burning, the amount of fat you're burning, the amount of carbs you're burning at different intensities. And then talk about where those are with respect to your thresholds. So the first and second threshold where those sit with respect to heart rate, lactate, etc., And we'll get those as an idea. We'll collect some sweat rate during that. Now when you're using the next pod, probably the thing you need to do is build out a profile. So different climatic conditions. So yeah. here it's fully controlled, but you need to develop that with different climatic conditions, so different heats, humidities, amount of solar, because that will change sweat rate a little bit. Right. So then it talks about that and it talks about an hourly rate, electrolyte losses with that. So you can start to dial in nutrition there around and where it's relevant for you, particularly for like transport or something like that is if you're running at this pace, roughly, what does that mean for a caloric burn? Mm -hmm. What does that mean from a carbohydrate requirement standpoint? So you start to understand about like, okay, so this is what I need to replace. So like a pint of ice cream, probably helpful, or maybe not, maybe you need to get more carbs right. or something like that. So you start to, yeah, dial that in and get a level of precision so you can start to help you hit your needs because it's really hard to do particularly if you're going to do three ultras in the space of what sounds like six weeks or so five, five weeks yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the thing there is you're not going to be perfect for any of them but you need to not be in a huge deficit if you put yourself in a hole it's really hard to dig out so yeah. it's like how can we keep you closer to functioning Because I'm bad at this? Or you're just like that explosive. Oh. You, were just, <laughs> you were just made to run for a long distance. I can just do it forever. Exactly. You weren't made to do stuff explosive. <laughs> no offense. You know what you're good at. I'm None taken. You know what you're good at. Solid, dude. versus the metabolic. Beer 2 max is gonna be your maximal rate of, I hear David can explain more, but it's gonna be your maximal rate of oxygen consumption. My name is Jonah Rosner, I'm a former NFL sports scientist. Today we're here at the Nike Money Performance Lab, NYC, where we help take the latest technology to help New York City runners optimize their run training. Like your maximal intensity. So, so it still matters for ultra events, VO2 max. So, so I feel like the metabolic might be a little better. Oh, definitely for you. Okay. But the VO2 max still matters, because it's gonna give us an idea of like, your engine, like your maximal aerobic capacity. So if you to max be relevant for you, it'd be interesting to get some texture for you on your like metabolic thresholds, where they are, and what your profile looks like. So what I anticipate for you is you have a very high LT1, because you spend a lot of time doing low yep. intensity, and then you would have some significant zonal compression, so your LT2 wouldn't be too far from that, your second threshold, and that would be pretty close to VO2 max. Okay. Um, that's what I anticipate given your training characteristics, or what I assume they are, from what we talked about. It was a thing. This is the next part. This is for sweat. Oh, I should have shaved my bicep today. So this will get sweat rate, electrolyte loss rate. Science. 
All right, so this is measuring the sweat coming off my arm. Yeah, so it'll, it's got a little thing there, so it measures the rate. Okay. So how quickly and how much as a result, and then it'll measure um, the sweat, the profile of that as well. So okay. what, um, what amount of sodium is in it as well, so it'll give you an idea there. So the, the concept here with this is that you probably get one of these yourself and use different climatic mm, conditions yeah, so you yeah. start to understand like night versus day. Rob Doctor have done that. Can I just go shirtless? Yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, you can do it for you. give the people what they want. You gotta give the people get more views that way. We're gonna make sure it's tight. We can't let any air get in there. I feel like pain. That's the, uh, if you don't make that joke, then you pretty much have to leave. And then... Who's your daddy? No, who's your daddy? Breathe in, breathe out. Yeah, that's yeah. a good one. You're a good one, man. Every four minutes, once we hit 6.5, we're gonna start using incline. 2%, 4%, 6%, 8% until I see you get to your second threshold. I think 6.5 and 8% and 10% should do it. And then once we're there, we're gonna cut it and get all that good data. So Paul. Yeehaw, Paul, let's go, buddy. What an ultra athlete. Uh, this is all day pace. This is across America right here. So right now we see Paul is burning mostly fat with a low VO2. It means Paul is extremely efficient. Paul is pretty much burning close to like 90% fat here, which is really good for Paul. That means he's super, super efficient. He's been able to hold this pace for a very long time, which is very important for an ultra athlete. If an ultra athlete starts burning through their glycogen very early, that's not a good thing because it's hard for them to replace because they're ready for so long. So we want them to take a fat burning strategy. See now as we've sped up, Paul's actually gotten more efficient. 6.5 David now. He's getting more efficient as he's picked up speed because he does more training at this intensity. So yeah. we would anticipate him getting more efficient where he spends his time. That's how you gain efficiency. So you can see his heart rate is still really controlled. He's still burning a ton of fat. He's below his threshold, but he's like right at first threshold, but very stable there. Yeah. It's like not actually. Like, not so theoretically, this is a all day pace for him. And then once we got to yeah. eight, I was really working. And then we were just doing 10% for fun and that hurt. Really tired, uh, way more tired than if I ran an ultra, surprisingly. Um, probably just like the intensity that we're doing this at. Um, so it's gonna be really good getting this data now because I'm gonna be able to use that to help me determine my fueling strategy um, as well as hydration for these upcoming races, especially because I'm doing three major races in like a five week period. So trying to stay on top of any deficits that I'm creating and also finding the optimal pace to run at so I can be really efficient for the races um, and try to do the best we can using some science. Sweat rate during that was about 22, uh, 27.3 ounces an hour. Okay. And your sodium loss is about 100, uh, like 1,666 milligrams per hour. So it's quite a high sodium loss. Probably need to build out a bit more of a profile so you understand where you sit right. in different conditions, but in these conditions, that's what you sweat out there. So it's quite high. Uh, which makes sense given what we're seeing of you. Yep. And the more acclimatized you are and the better adapted you are to heat and things like that, the more you'll sweat. Uh, 27.3 ounces an hour, you could try and replace that. It's probably wise to use a little bit less than that. Weigh yourself pre and post, and then make sure you made up any deficits there as well. So it's probably more about, are you drinking enough? Yeah, so you should probably be aiming for a flask an hour, okay. and then 
checking your deficit and trying to make up anything you have there. Maybe it's you know an extra every five hours you do an extra portion of a flask, maybe another fifth of a flask, something like that. So trying to get there, and you know obviously you don't want to overhydrate, you want to drink to thirst, but there or thereabouts is what you were sweating out in here, and you can see that from yep. dripping. how you're looking. Yeah. All right, so we just finished a bunch of testing here at the Nike Running Performance Lab here in New York City. Um, we did some force plate testing, we did some metabolic testing, we did some sweat testing, some really awesome data from these two that's really going to help me dial in some of my training, and especially the nutrition as we're rolling into a major cycle of three ultras over 100 miles each, all within a five, six week period. So some dynamite information that we got to digest, digest here, it's going to be good. That was awesome, Paul. Thanks for coming by. You're going to crush UTMB. That testing was really cool.